What is up ladies and gentlemen, CJ the Cheese DJ here and we are back with a brand new top 10 for you guys today and we're pretty much doing what we did with our carnival one where we are revamping our old uh, top 10 video. Now if you haven't seen that one already, it is in the description down below but without further ado guys, let's get in to our top 10 video. And today we are doing top 10 traveling creatures. Now for these creatures, there is a huge variety of different dinos and everything like that that you can use. We've narrowed it down to 10 of them and we're basing it on their speed, their versatility, their attack power, their health, all that sort of stuff. How well they're able to navigate the terrain, how well they're able to deal with enemy dinos and stuff like that. So guys, without further ado, let's jump into it at number 10. So guys, coming in at number 10, we have the Dire Bear. Now, in my opinion, the Dire Bear is one of the best creatures to run around Ark with because he's got this movement speed buff that you can see the longer you sprint, you will eventually reach the apex of the sprint and you will sprint that fast for as long as you don't run into anything that'll stop you. You can see that we ran into the tree and that actually stopped us there. Now, as well as that, the Dire Bear is on the strong side of the creatures of Ark. He's definitely able to hold his own against large carnivores such as T-Rexes, Aloes, Spinos, all that sort of stuff. You can see he, that he hits for 107. It's actually 157 at the moment. These guys are just mate boosted. Let's turn this off so you can actually... Okay, it's not going to work. There we go. You can see that he does have two attacks as well. The bite attack, which you can actually use while running, and the swipe attack, which you actually stop using while running. Now, like I said, this guy just dishes out a lot of damage. He's great on stamina usage. If you look at the top right corner where our stamina bar is, it, it depletes so slow. Now, mind you, this guy is a 150 wild tame, and we haven't actually seen what his base stats are or anything like that, how many points went into what. But just from this, like you can see here, he has ridiculous amounts of stamina. He's got 2.5k worth of health, which is a solid amount of health. You can easily buff this guy up as well. He's got over a thousand weight, which is wonderful. Which means if you need to go about, you know, ferrying resources between a base, ferrying resources between a raid in your base, anything like that, or even just running around just raiding on this guy, you can do so with him because he has the weight capacity to do so. Now, like I said, he doesn't have any extra levels into him, and you can see here that we're hitting for 207 damage, which is nuts. Now, another really cool thing about the bear is that he can obviously gather honey for uh, free without taking any sort of damage. You can see down the bottom there, bee protection. Now, as well as that, another thing that not many people are aware of is that he actually provides hypothermal and hypothermal protection. So you know how you guys get hot and cold in certain regions of Ark? This guy actually lowers it, making it more suitable for you, as long as you've got him near you. So this guy is a great creature to take traveling with you, and I would heavily recommend it. That's why he comes in at number 10 on this list. Now, the creature coming in at number 9 is everyone's favorite marsupial, the Thylacolio. This guy is an absolute beast when it comes to traveling around Ark. Not only does he have one of, well, I'd say one of the coolest abilities, but he also has a crap ton of worth of stats. You can see he's got five and a half thousand worth of health, 1300 stamina, which isn't obviously the greatest, but you can improve upon that with extra levels. He's got a decent amount of weight at 616 and his melee damage is very solid. Now, the thing that makes the Thylocolios cool is that he has one or he is one of the only dinos that actually has this ability. The ability to travel vertical wars. Now, you can currently see where are stuck on here. It has to be like pretty damn vertical in order for him to climb. If it has any kind of indents or anything like that in it, he'll struggle to climb up it. But you can see here, this wall is running rather well for us. There we go. Can we make it to the top? Woohoo, baby. Yeah, look at us go. So the Thylacolio can do this on mountain faces, trees, anything. Anything that has the vertical sort of facing, he can climb it. And you can see here, he's pretty damn good at it as well. And just like that, we're at the top of this little cliff. Why we climbed up here, I have no idea, but it doesn't matter. We made it up here. As well as this, the Thylacolio has one of, in my opinion, the best jumps for a land-based quadruped. You know, you can see here, it's not obviously the greatest, like it doesn't cover the most distance, but it's a pretty damn solid jump. You can cover quite a bit of terrain with that. Now, in terms of damage power, he is pretty powerful. You can see here, we're hitting 138 on this trike. It isn't mate boosted, but you know, it is very similar to uh, the Die Bear in terms of attack power. The only thing that makes the Thylacolios slightly better is, in my opinion, their climbing ability and the extra health. Other than that, oh, they've also got to the uh, ambush ability, which I can show you guys right here. So pretty much if you climb up a vertical wall or a tree or anything, and you spin around, you can actually do a pounce attack. Uh, I don't know if we can make it to those. 
There we go. Hold on. Let's let's just do this again. So this pounce attack, if you're doing it against players, actually pins the players. Okay, then Thylacolio. There we go. And it's useful for base defense. So if you set up like an army of Thylacolios on wars, you'll easily be able to pin any enemy players that come into the base and hopefully kill them with your Thylacolio if they've got enough uh, melee damage. So they, they're, they're great for that as well. But their speed is relatively decent. You can level up their movement speed a little bit if you want a bit of a faster experience. Which in my opinion, it is worth leveling up. Because they can get pretty fast if you put a few levels in them. That paired with the jumping ability makes them really viable to travel around any map. And I, I, I'm a really big fan of Thylacolios. They're just, they're really cool looking. You can get some really cool uh, buffs on them, like their health and everything like that. And like, 5,000 health. It's nuts. If you could take these guys into, into boss battles, I definitely think they would be able to take out the boss battles. As well as that, they're relatively decent swimmers as well, as you can see. Alrighty guys, and the creature coming in at number 8 on this list is none other than the gas bag. Now, the gas bag in terms of traveling, DPS and all that sort of stuff, he's not the greatest. That's why he's slightly higher up on the list than you guys would probably expect. I don't even know if you guys would expect him to be here at all. But the gas bag is great because he can pretty much be a mini flyer, I guess you could say. He can be very gassy and make it so that you're able to traverse the terrain with relative ease. You can see there we've pretty much just... Oh, we're not going to make it to the water. You can see that we actually oh, we made it to the water. So you can see that we managed to cover the distance between the island and this island with relative ease. Like we still had a bit of gas left, but we just wanted to land into the water to try and negate some of that uh, fall damage. And you can actually sort of steer him while flying around. You can make him go up a little bit more if you want to. And you can make him throw out the rest of his gas using the C button. Do be careful with this guy though, because he will take fall damage and he will take it pretty hard. So you've got a couple of options if that's the case. You can either decide to try and land him in some water like we've just done there, or you can actually just hop off him at the last second. This will actually prevent him from taking fall damage. You might take a little bit of fall damage, but it's nothing in comparison to what your poor little gas bag will take. Now, as well as that, you can see here we're flying off again. So if we were to say, for example, fly over here and let's just dump the rest of our gas out. So we're gonna come down land. We can just jump off at the last second. Boom, just like that, we're safe. Gas bag didn't take any damage, that was from before, and we are all good. Now, as well as that, if he does get into a bit of a pickle, you can always just blow the smaller base dinos away anyway. If you get into a fight with the larger dinos, well, then you pretty much just want to gas yourself out of there as fast as possible. You can try gassing them, I doubt it'll work too well for you, but those paroactors went flying. Now, as well as that, they've got a huge, and I mean a huge amount of weight. Look at all that weight on him, 5,340. That's an absurd amount of weight. So if you want to ever like transport stuff or with your gas bag, definitely, definitely go about doing it with your gas bag because they are nuts. Their stamina is okay. Their health is also pretty solid. I have seen people soak with gas bags because they take reduced damage from uh, bullets while in the uh, giant form. You can see there, we are pretty damn big. However, you don't want to get into a fight with these guys because you're not going to do much damage with them. Like, it's, it just comes down to that. But you can see here, we've got 9 damage per second with the Raptor. If we were to deplete ourselves, this guy's going to hit us a lot harder. So, that's why people use these guys to soak turrets. You can see there, look at that. We've already reduced the damage we are taking ex exponentially. So, you definitely want to do that. And if you ever get into a fight, you feel like you're going to lose, well, yeah, then you just fly yourself out of there. There we go, look at that. Just like that, we're free. You can sort of steer him, but yeah. That's why the gas bag comes in at number 8. Just for a little bit of a fun one. Now guys, coming in at number 7, we've got the Baryonyx. The Baryonyx is a pretty damn awesome travel mount. The main reason being is because he's pretty fast in water and he's also pretty fast on land. Now, as well as that, he's also got the added ability of being able to do this tail swing attack, which effectively stuns anything that it hits underwater, which is great for taking out Megalodons and Plesiosaurs and all that sort of stuff because the stun ability just nails them. You know, they won't be able to move or anything like that, as well as Mantis, so if you need to get into like a fight with them, and you need to kill them, well, you can do so with the Baryonyx. As well as that, he's also got a pretty solid amount of melee damage behind him. This guy here is a 150 tank, he's got 361% melee damage. He's a bit lacking on the health side, but that is understandable, you can pump that up a little bit more with some levels. However, when you compare his size to some of the other dinos on this list, it makes sense that his health is slightly smaller. But you can see here, he is also a great land mount. You know, that's the main reason this guy is on this list, because he's versatile as both an underwater 
and a land mount, which is great. You can see here if we jump in the water, he doesn't utilize any oxygen while swimming, which is really helpful. Can make those deep sea dives real easy to get into if you want an easier mount, say like the Baryonyx, instead of a giant squid. Makes things a little bit easier for you. And other than that, there's not really much else to say about this guy, just that he's great for land and ocean traveling. You can pump his movement speed up a little bit more if you want to move faster, which obviously everyone does. And I would definitely recommend it with the Baryonyx because he can get very fast. But his melee damage is great. He has the ability to jump, which can help in terms of covering the terrain quicker. You can see that we are covering terrain quicker than we would if we would just run across it. So you've got that as well. And he can easily hold his own with Kano's, even Rex's. Spino's, you might be pushing it because of that buff that they get, but you can definitely deal some damage with the Baryonyx, and that is why he is on this list. Now guys, the creature coming in at number six is, in my opinion, the best underwater dino that you can tame. I think the Tuso Toothus is definitely the strongest underwater tame you can get, and he's easily able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mosasaurs and Alpha Mosasaurs, as well as Alpha Tuso Toothuses. These guys are great, and in terms of exploring the underwater terrain, I could not recommend them more. This guy is an absolute beast. He has a ton of carry weight, a ton of health, and a ton of damage output. You can see here that he's got 18k health. 19k, sorry. This was a level 150 tame, and it's got 19k health. 1200 weight, which is also a very solid amount of weight. Now, these guys are a little bit slower than Mosasaurs, but they make up, make up for it with their huge stopping power, as well as the ability to also grab their prey and stop their prey from getting away. Now, you can also abuse this in order to kill Alpha Mosasaurs. If you actually manage to swing your Tuso Toothless around the right way, you can actually get him stuck in the terrain and just grapple him and pummel him to death. You just saw there we took out a whole school of Mantas, and now we're attacking a Bacillosaurus. These guys just deal so much damage to everything around them. You can see there we're hitting for 204. And if you ever find yourself ever getting into a fight you can't win, you can simply uh, squirt your way out of it with a little bit of uh, squid ink. You can see that we've left behind a trail of ink and you can actually use that to escape any sort of danger you find yourself in, which is great if you don't think you can get away from uh, an Alpha Mosasaur. And we're just slightly dying here, which is great. There we go. So these guys are great for all that. And who doesn't want to ride around on a gigantic Kraken? Like, let's be real here. That's what this is, a ginormous Kraken. Okay, you can see here we've got an Alpha Megalodon here. Let's just uh, quickly grab him. Boom. Just like that, he is pretty much rendered. Whoop, he was rendered useless until we uh, sort of just let him free. But you can easily take out an Alpha Megalodon without even having to worry about grappling him because the two so's just deal that much damage. Unless, of course, you forget to bring your oxygen tank and die like I did. So guys, that's why the Tuso comes in at number six on this list. Now guys, coming in at number five, we have the Monagama. There are quite a few extinction creatures on this list, so bear with me, guys. In my opinion, I do think they're probably some of the best traveling creatures that uh, we've got around. Now, the Monagama definitely takes the cake as, oh crap, we screwed up big time. Definitely takes the cake as one of the, um, best traveling creatures in my opinion. Now the reason he is number five is because I feel like flyers in general are slightly better than the Monagama. Like in terms of getting around and everything like that, they're slightly better because they don't have to constantly rest like the Monagama does. Like for example, if you were to ride around on a rock drake in comparison to destination faster than the Monagama can. And you know, they've both got great stopping power. So the Monagama comes in at number five. He's obviously got his ability to do the little hop attack like that, as well as the dive bomb attack like that. Now this guy utilizes a crap ton of stamina, which is why it's a little bit more uh, slower than your traditional methods because of that. However, he makes up for it with his ability to freeze literally anything. You can see here these aloes have been frozen solid. We were, able, we were able to hold them in place for a while. Now this is post nerf. Before they got nerfed, they were absolutely destructive to all means. They were just absolutely crazy. You could snipe enemy dinos out of turret range and nothing could stop you unless of course the player was online and they decided to shoot back. Monagmas were, they killed Ark for a, for a stage of time. So these guys are great traveling creatures. You saw that they deal a decent amount of damage with their frost breath. Their melee attacks are decent as well. They can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Rexes because of their freeze ability. It's, they're just crazy. They're nuts. 
As well as that, like I said, they've got the ability to do like the dive bomb attack, which can kill enemy players off the back of mounts as well. Rather easily, if I do say so myself. So guys, Monagma's coming in at number five. Now guys, the creature coming in at number four is none other than the Rock Drake himself. This guy is an absolute machine when it comes to traveling, when it comes to doing anything really. So the main way that the Rock Drake gets around is his gliding ability. This pretty much allows him to plummet at a controlled pace. Now the cool thing about this is that you can obviously gain yourself a bit of height every now and again. But you also get the ability for the crosshairs to appear, which if you're in range of terrain, you can pretty much shot put yourself straight to it. Now, you might say, well, that's not as fast as flying. You'd be surprised how much faster the Rock Drake is in comparison to conventional flies. Like you can see here, you can actually glide for quite a bit of time if you manage to get yourself a bit of distance and you manage to glide right. You can see that we're still barely touching the water, but we're still floating. Now, the awesome thing about the Rock Drake as well is that he is a very good swimmer. You can see here that we're able to swim tra -la, la 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 really fast. Now he can also attack in the water, so if anything does try to get in his way, he can easily bite through it. He's got plenty of oxygen, so you don't need to worry about him drowning as well, and he can easily jump himself out of the water if you get closer to terrain, which is absolutely amazing. Now, this guy, he deals incredible damage. He's got really good stats. You can see here, this is a 150. He's got just under 8k health. His stamina is very lacking there. He's got 688 weight and 330 melee damage. He can dish out some serious damage. Now, he doesn't have any sort of special breath attack like the Wyverns do. You can see here just the amount of power that the Rock Drake has behind him. He hits like a truck. 197 damage. That's with 330 melee damage. If we pump that up, we take that right up there. Look at this. Boom. 224 damage. These guys just hit ridiculous amounts of damage, and I cannot recommend them anymore. For traveling, for anything really, they're great, because they've also got the ability to do that. You can see there, you can at the top right hand corner, we've got climbing. This pretty much enables them to stick to any sort of surface, and you can actually launch yourself off and shot put to other surfaces. This allows you to climb up the walls of aberration, it allows you to climb up the walls of bases, it allows you to climb up the walls of bloody anything. So, Rock Drake is definitely one of the best creatures to take traveling, and he can cloak. Now guys, the creature coming in at number 3 is none other than the Argent. This is probably everyone's first team that they go about trying to get in Ark, aside from herbivores. Now Argents are great because they've got the weight capacity to ferry huge amounts of resources. You can see here, this guy's got 720 base weight, which is pretty darn good. Now, as well as that, they've also got the ability to pick up Ankies, Dodicaruses, pretty much anything that has the ability to gather any valuable resource, the Argies can pick them up. Now, this makes grabbing metal a cinch because you're essentially able to pick up the Anki, take your Anki to wherever you want. I'm not sure if you can enable wandering on the Anki and let it harvest automatically, but if you can, that's even more OP. And then if your Anki does run out of weight, you can simply transfer the weight over to your Argy because he's able to reduce the weight of certain materials in his inventory, such as metal, stone, crystal, obsidian, all that sort of stuff. He's able to reduce the weight of it in his inventory, which is great for ferrying resources between bases, using him for raids to take all your loot, as well as that, you can use him as a portable smithy. So if you're in the process of making a new base and you don't have a smithy with you, you can simply open up your Argy's inventory, chuck everything that you need into it, and boom bada boom, you've got yourself a metal base already made up for you. As well as that, these guys can act as damage dealers. Like, they have some pretty good damage for a flyer. You can see here we're in 84. I don't know what this guy's base damage is. 337, which is not bad. Their stamina usage is also really great. You can see there we've been flying around for about two minutes now, give or take, and we're only about half stamina, which is really useful. Now, do take into mind, this guy doesn't have any extra levels in stamina as well, so you've got to factor that in as well. But these guys are great, and I would definitely recommend an RG to everyone. So guys, let's move on to number two. Alrighty guys, now coming in at number two, we have the Snow Owl. Now, the top three were a really hard one to decide on because You've got all these dinosaurs, they've all got their own special unique things about them, and it makes it really hard to make a list about them when you have to limit it to 10. So the Snow Owl comes in at number 10 mainly because of his gliding ability. He's one of the only dinos, there's two of them, he's one of the only dinos that has this ability, which enables him to travel faster. 
Now, it's great for navigating high terrains, and when you get yourself high enough, you can pull off some pretty fast feats. Now, as well as that, the Snow Owl also has the ability to turn on Thermal Vision. Now, this Thermal Vision is great for detecting enemy predators, or enemy players that have hidden their bodies or they're hiding around your base or anything like that. You can pretty much detect anything and everything that has a heat signature, which is absolutely great. Now, another real cool thing about the Snow Owl that makes him great is his freeze ability. Now, if you ever find yourself in a battle and you need to escape from it, you can simply freeze over some enemies, flap your wings and take off out of there. As well as that, you'll also heal yourself in the process if you do take damage from these enemies. You do just have to be careful of your stamina usage because if you find that you've used too much stamina, well then you're not really going to be escaping from anything and you're going to probably die from it. You can see there the stamina depletion is real. It takes a lot of stamina to freeze and heal something. Do take note as well though that you will freeze that enemy if you use the attack near them. Now other than that these guys are great. You know they don't have the greatest sort of health or melee damage but they can carry quite a bit of weight on them, which is also useful. The main purpose for these guys is pretty much just to get around the map. You can see there, we're only hitting for 71, so it's obviously not the greatest amount of damage, but it can get into fights with certain things and escape them if it chooses to, or even kill them. But that's pretty much all there is for the Snow Owl. He's definitely one of the greater creatures to tame up, and I would recommend him. That's why he comes in at number two on this list. And finally, the one you guys have all been waiting for. The creature coming in at number one is the Griffin. In my opinion, this guy is the best creature to travel around Ark with because of the dive ability. Very similar to the Snow Owl, except in my opinion, I'm pretty sure the Griffin is able to glide for longer lengths of time, which means you're able to cover more terrain much quicker. As well as that, he's also got the dive bomb attack, which you guys will see right here, which does that, which enables him to slam down on the ground and deal damage to certain things in the area. The only downside to the Griffin is that he has horrible, and I mean horrible stamina. But that is definitely something that you can level up over time if you want to go about doing it. This guy is easily able to hold his own in dinosaur battles as well. He's able to survive being sniped as well by enemy players. Do be careful though, they are they can get uh, pretty damaged because they don't have a saddle slot because you don't need a saddle to ride these guys, so they don't take any sort of reduced damage. Now, like I was saying, you've got the ability to do the dive bomb attack, which does a radius of damage in the area if we can manage to bloody pull the thing off. As well as that, you can also do the diving swipe attack, which you'll see here. So the diving swipe attack is that one there where you pretty much dive and do that swipe attack. That dealt 400 damage. That is a pretty insane amount of damage. Now, as well as that, the dive bomb attack is that, and that also does quite a bit of damage. Just be careful uh, not to take yourself into the freezing cold biome where you'll probably die. Now, the Griffin also has the ability to carry smaller creatures and players. You can see there, you are able to use the left click in order to pick up players, which is useful. And as well as that, you can also seat an extra player on the back of the Griffin. So you could potentially use this guy as a taming station, as a sniping station, as a scouting station, anything really, as long as it involves another player. The Griffin, in my opinion, is the best traveling creature to get around on Ark with. The only downside as well is that he is only found on Ragnarok, unless of course you transfer him over from the map. So guys, we're gonna wrap up the video here. Let me know what you thought of the video. Let me know if you change any of the creatures around on the list. Do take note, it is very hard for me to make up these lists because I'm limited to 10 dinos when there are just so many bloody dinos. Like for example, some honorable mentions would be the Karkonos, the Reaper King, as well as Wyverns, Pteranodons even, because they're just, they're great creatures and I can't make room for them all on this list. I try to make these as balanced as possible. So guys, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe down below for more. But other than that, I will catch you in the next one. Got this soul